In this video, we'll talk about language endangerment, the artificial process by which languages are lost. And by the way, um, warning, the content will contain references to violence, violence to children and colonial violence. So let's start with a little quiz from something we saw in week one. Do you remember how many languages there are in the world? Is it about a thousand, three thousand, seven thousand, ten thousand? How many are there? It's about seven thousand. There's a lot of languages on planet Earth. However, if you look at your phone or if you look at your computer and you try to switch your computer into a different language, you probably wouldn't find 7,000. You, you might not even find 100. There's very few languages available on your phone. And um, if you think about it, there's a lot of diversity that you're not seeing. You get to see a little bit of the diversity in the world, but you don't get to see all the diversity that exists. It's the same thing with maps, for example. This is a map of Arizona here in the US. And if you saw this map, you would think Arizona is just a very large place with a bunch of dots sprinkled on it. However, Arizona is in reality one of the most diverse territories in the US. There are 21 indigenous languages spoken in Arizona, including Navajo, Apache, Tohono O'odham, Yavapai, and many others. All of the regions marked here in purple are indigenous territories in Arizona. So there's a lot of the diversity in the world that we don't see. And the world is a very diverse place. This is a map of the island of New Guinea, which is, which is split between Papua New Guinea and Indonesia. And this is the most linguistically diverse territory in the world. It has about 800 different languages. And this map is only for language families. So as you can see, there's a lot of diversity on this planet that we don't see. One very interesting pattern about uh, linguistic diversity is that it's correlated with ecological diversity. In areas of the world where we see a lot of ecological diversity, um, we also find a lot of languages. For example, again, in Papua New Guinea, Central Africa, throughout the Americas, and so forth. And there is another aspect in which these two are correlated. Over the last couple hundred years, we have started to see less diversity both in natural species and in languages spoken in the world. For example, if you go to a supermarket today, you're not going to find many types of tomatoes. Maybe you'll find two or three types of tomatoes. However, if you see a picture of tomatoes 100 years ago, you will find many heirloom varieties, many smaller local varieties, and that they're all different types of tomatoes. So over the last couple hundred years, we have seen a reduction in ecological diversity of species and in languages spoken in the world. And this process is not natural. This process is human made. Um, let's take a look at the picture on the right. So this says, speak French, be a clean person. This is a picture from a school in France. And what a, what a sentiment. Imagine seeing that in your school. In, if you believe it, and I ask you, what is the language spoken in France? You'll probably say French. But this has not always been the case. By the time of the French Revolution, only about 49% of France spoke French, the northern part, where Paris is. However, the southern part of France spoke other languages, for example, Catalan, Basque, and Occitanian in particular. So many people spoke Occitanian, but Paris spoke French. So Paris made explicit laws to try to shame the people of the south into speaking French. The campaign was literally called the shaming, la vergogna. And over the next hundred years, they made every effort to essentially tell people that in order to be clean, they needed to speak French. And it was so effective that right now, only about 7% of France speaks Occitanian. 93% of the country speaks French. So nowadays it is true that French is uh, the majority language of the, country, of the country, but it was not at the beginning. It was through an explicit campaign of shaming that they got to this goal. The picture in the upper left it's called, uh, has um, 
wooden token called a Welsh knot, N-O-T. And it worked like this. So England controlled the schools in Wales and mandated that only English be spoken in those schools. And they had these tokens, and whenever they found a student speaking in Welsh, they would put it around their neck. And the only way you could take it off of your neck is if you ratted someone else out. If you found some other kid speaking Welsh, and then boom, you could put it on them. And whoever was wearing the knot at the end of the day bah, would get a beating. So you had a lot of incentive to try to get it off of your neck. The token on the lower left is a Hongen Fuda, which is from Japan, and it worked exactly the same. It was in Okinawa to discourage kids from speaking Okinawan and make them speak standard Tokyo Japanese. Imagine uh, if they did that to you in school for speaking your language that they would beat you up. I personally know people to whom this happened in, in Italy and in Mexico. In, in Italy, they would beat their hands if they were found speaking in one of the northern dialects of Italian. And in Mexico, do you know those like sharp bottle caps, like old bottle caps for soda? Can you imagine, and they're very sharp, can you imagine ordering a kid to kneel on those as a punishment for speaking an indigenous language? Or um, popcorn, like unpopped popcorn before you put it in the microwave, which is very hard. Can you imagine having a kid kneel on that as punishment for speaking an indigenous language from Mexico? I know people to whom this happened personally. And by the way, obviously, if this happened to you, would you like that to happen to your children? These are the mechanisms through which languages are lost, which are very much intentional and artificial. Languages can be lost because of a loss of population, because of genocides. For example, in the island of Tasmania, in southern Australia, there was um, the settlers from Britain had a bounty on people's body parts. So they would pay someone if they brought a Tasmanian man's testicles. They would pay them an amount of money. And of course, this would be a form of genocide. And sure enough, the population in Tasmania descended terribly, and the language was lost along with the people. Another way in which languages are lost is through forced change by laws, for example, from the government. So in Spain, from 1939 to 1975, there was a dictator who demanded that, every, um, that Spain only use the Spanish language for its government. However, Spain is a very multilingual territory. It has other languages like Basque and Catalan. And until 1975 in Catalonia, it was illegal to have schools in the Catalan language, to uh, offer any government services in the Catalan language, and you could, you could get in trouble and go to jail for singing in Catalan. So these laws enacted a forced change. A final way in which languages are lost is through voluntary change, which is exactly what I told you before. Imagine if you were the one who was kneeling on bottle caps. Would you want that for your children? Of course not. You would do, because you love them, you would do everything in your power for them not to have to go through this. So you would not speak to them in the indigenous language or the minority language. You would tell them just, just speak English, keep quiet, and comply to whatever they tell you, which is what happened in a lot of the Americas. This is a picture from a residential school here in the U.S. called Carlisle School where they had the motto that they had to kill the Indian to save the man. And they took pictures like these to shame students into um, adapting to the settler culture. So as you can see, it's voluntary very much in quotation marks. So these were all mechanisms used for people to change their language usage and divert them, and divert them into speaking Spanish or English, for example. So the world does have a large diversity of language, languages, which is not usually visible to us. We are familiar with a very small slice of the diversity of the world. And a lot of it is being lost, and this process is not natural. It is artificial, and it is driven by loss of population, by forced change through loss, and by voluntary change, by forcing people to choose to change their languages.